So we are all aware of great fashion designers like Marta Magella, Demna Vesalia and Haida Ackerman. And what do all these designers have in common? They all went to the Royal Academy of Fine Art in Antwerp. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about how the school went from a school that was uh, predominantly about art to becoming a fashion powerhouse. So back in the 1950s, the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp was predominantly an art school, as the name suggests. And in the 1950s, as far as fashion goes, the only fashion specific thing that the school did offer were some side classes that were mainly on um, fashion drawing and life drawing. Around this time, there were rumors that there was going to be a fashion course added to the school. And this was met with a lot of negative responses um, from the head of academia of the school, uh, with people thinking that fashion did not really belong in an art school and with others thinking that great artists would now become great fashion designers and they felt it was taking away from the industry of art. The head of the academy at the time was a man called Mark Macken and he was actually the one who was pushing for um, this newly included fashion course and he disagreed with all the animosity towards him obviously wanting this course to be actualized and the main reason for this was because he felt that fashion influenced every single part of history and it influenced every single person in life at the time. At the time, he actually made a quote, um, which I'll read out. So he said, well, seeing historically, fashion is so closely bound to the art of its time that it is impossible to separate the two. There is nothing that reflects the times as much as fashion. The danger of the course lies in the risk that great art would become fashion, but that will not be prevented by fashion courses at an art school. So as you can see, he obviously liked the idea and he feels like fashion influences everything. Um, but like I said earlier, he said that the only risk of this would be that um, the danger of the course lies in the risk that great art would become fashion. So people who would go on to make really great artistic work uh, would use that talent and instead put it towards fashion. And so by the late 1950s, Mark Macken, who was the head of the course, was looking for a suitor and looking for the person who would head uh, the fashion course at the time. Now, there were rumors going around that of course this fashion course was going to be a thing. And a lot of people thought that the great fit for the head of the new fashion course would be a woman called Mary Peugeot. And a lot of her colleagues encouraged her to apply for this role and of course, um, she got this role. So immediately, Mary Peugeot got this role. She traveled straight to France and then later to Cologne in Germany, uh, where she basically set out to learn the profession of fashion um, from top to bottom. Now, reading from my reference here, it says that uh, the first school she went to in France classes and design work were based on the history of costume and history of art, uh, with great emphasis on general cultural education. The course also included training in publicity, typography, and drapage. There was a strong emphasis on life drawing and the human body. So that was basically essentially everything she learned uh, when she went to school in Paris, in France. And then after learning all these things, she then straight after went to Cologne in Germany, where she learned more. So when she went to Cologne, she took classes in theater, fashion, and costume. Um, and obviously that's going to let her know more about kind of historical dressmaking. And the good thing about this was the classes in Cologne were not as intensive as the classes in Paris. So she had time to work on separate things outside of um, the school she was going to. So during this time, of course, Mary Peugeot took um, private classes in things like drapage and couture. So by the early 1960s, Mary Peugeot had this massive arsenal of fashion skills and fashion experience that she would take back to Antwerp and implement into a new course that she created. Now, it's good to note that Mary Peugeot was already a graduate of the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp, and she was actually a painter. So this is someone who was a painter and then got some experience from art and then got some fashion experience from some of the top schools in Germany and France for fashion. So now you have someone who has the mindset of a painter with the skills of a fashion designer. So by March 2nd, 1962, um, a new department was added uh, to the school and it was called Fashion and Ornamental Drawing. And it was under the umbrella of the graphic arts curriculum in the school. And in the 1963 to 1964 academic year, 
Um, Mary Prigeot finally had her first fashion course at the school. And this course was called Fashion Drawing. So now there was an official course at the school called Fashion Drawing. Of course, like I mentioned previously, um, in the early 1950s, there was not really anything to do with fashion apart from some random drawing classes at night. And she also maintained the evening classes, even though there was now a dedicated fashion drawing course at the school. So if you were so interested in fashion drawing, then you could take the course and then do the extra evening classes, which was very good. And it continued this way until 1966. So between the 1963 to 64 um, academic year 1966, um, it was really just a fashion drawing course. There was nothing really more to it. Uh, she was just teaching people how to draw um, different sketches in terms of fashion design and how to do still life drawing. And then in the 1965 to 1966 academic year, the course was changed from just a drawing course to a fashion and theatre costume course. And going back to my references here, it says that Prigeot believed that Belgium offered good opportunities in the textile industry for up and coming fashion designers. From the perspective of her training of art, she wanted to shape designers who, if indeed, were inspired by Parisian fashion, they would still be able to present a vision and image of fashion that is distinctly theirs. It was with this objective in mind that the curriculum was designed. So what this basically says is that Mary Prigeot wanted to create designers that thought for themselves, creative designers who, if they were still taking inspiration from what they saw in Paris, that they, how they um, design clothing is intrinsically theirs and very unique to them. And obviously we'll get into this further, but that is why people like the Antwerp Six, all the aesthetics of the way they designed was so uniquely different because that's how they were trained. That is how the course was designed. It was supposed to be designed to force you to think for yourself and to force you into designing in a way that's very creative and unique to you as a person. But really until the 1970s, there was still more of a focus on the drawing side and aspects of the course rather than the technical side and the design and construction side. And that all kind of changed in the 1970s. So it went from very much a class that was mainly just learning to draw because remember this, is, this was an art school, historically an art school that was trying to transition into a fashion course. So it makes sense that the early parts of the course still was mainly drawing because that's what they're used to. And at the time students were just drawing uh, many different fashion specific things like hats, accessories, uh, different outfits, um, sketches of different clothing and conceptualizing different designs. And here it says, the purpose of the fashion drawing was to sharpen the student's sense of perception. With a thorough knowledge of their materials, they would be able to achieve better graphic visualization of material, form, color, and the dialogue between apparel and human movement. And then of course, I'm going to get back to my notes, um, but further on, like I said in the 1970s, this is when, um, of course, the course started becoming very, very fashion specific and it became kind of rigorous and even current day, and I'm sure some people watching this video probably go to the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp, the course is very, very rigorous. It's probably one of the most rigorous courses um, in the whole world because of how it's, it's designed. You have to create collections every single year. I don't think that happens in many fashion schools. Uh, most people just have to do a graduate collection and then in first and second year or third year, they just produce a few pieces. Whereas the Royal Academy of Arts um, in Antwerp, they had to produce a collection every year, which was insane. So going back to my notes, uh, when they made the course more fashion specific, it says that students were given weekly drawing assignments in which they had to make contemporary derivatives from existing fashion objects, which I love because the fact that what this means by making contemporary derivatives from existing fabric objects, that means you're going to take an object that obviously is historical from a time in the past and then making it contemporary makes it modern. So they're literally training these students to take them something that's old, a design that's old, and then make it more modern and make it more unique to the current time. And that to me is how you reference people. Like I'm so tired of fashion designers now who just copy things. And this is why I really love this school and the ethos of 
how the school was brought up and basically the foundation of how the course was made is all about teaching people to reference not copy uh, which i love so then it says they were sometimes required to draw perfume bottles or certain historical costumes these classes were not intended simply to have technical drawing skills but also to heighten students creativity so that goes more into what i'm saying it's not just all about technical drawing skills it's good to be a really technical designer but nowadays everyone just makes the same stuff and it's quite annoying so i like once again it said these classes were not intended simply to hone technical drawing skills but also to heighten um to heighten students creativity and yeah i'm just a huge fan of that and going on it says because Peugeot's own technical background was limited she soon hired the 35 year old Van Leemput, uh, one of her students as an assistant for the actual production of the designs she was recruited for the atelier for cutting because she had practical experience um, and this is kind of weird because um, from my notes what I'm seeing here is that this uh, her name's Martha Van Leemput. Obviously, I might be saying that wrong, but essentially, she was still a student under Mary Peugeot uh, when they recruited her to be a teacher. And it was because Mary Peugeot, even though she went to Paris and she went to Cologne and she learned all about fashion design and the technicalities, she didn't have much field experience, whereas this person had. Uh, so she thought, instead of me teaching people how to draw when I can't and how to cut garments, um, I'll make one of my students do it, which was interesting. And going deeper into these um, notes, Van Limpe, who was her student, teaching other students how to cut, um, eventually stayed on and became one of the academic members of staff, uh, which is even more interesting. So in terms of what they had to do, it says, in the first year, students were assigned to make a skirt and a top, as well as a beat ensemble and evening dress based on a predetermined time. In the second year, the students made replicas of historical costume. Based on this historical piece, they then created a modern collection of five silhouettes. And I think every single aspect of this course is literally just teaching students how to take something from the past and make it more contemporary. And also how to take something from the past and transform it into something that's your own at the same time contemporary. And then it says in the third year, the same exercise as the second year was repeated on the basis of traditional folklore costumes, followed by a collection of seven silhouettes. Sorry, my camera died, but um, costumes followed by a collection of seven silhouettes and two or three children's pieces based on folklore costumes. And then this text goes further on to say, the purpose of this assignment was to help students analyze a culture and in this way be able to more closely understand and approach the mentality of given people. And oh my God, I love everything that this course was built on. Like, let's just read this again because like you guys need to just understand this. It says, the purpose of this assignment was to help students analyze a culture and in this way be able to more closely understand and approach the mentality of given people. That, geez, my word. So now we have a problem with cultural appropriation and people not understanding cultures and it literally says the purpose of their assignment was to give students and help them analyze a culture so that teaching people how to really deeply analyze a culture to a level that you can understand it to where they said and in this way be able to more closely understand and approach the mentality of given people so they want you to understand a culture so deeply that you understand the mentality of the people and this is not just, let's say, a culture in terms of Africans or Indians or whatever. This is also a culture in terms of time. So like what British people were doing in like culturally in the 1800s and the 1700s. So when you reference the 1700s or 1800s, you've researched it so deeply that you understand the culture of given people. And it says the mentality of given people. And that kind of basis of a fashion design course is honestly why we have designers like Marto Magella and Anzimila Mista and the rest of the Antop Six and Demna Vesalia because because the way they're taught is so deeply considered and that is why they produce such amazing and unique designers. And it says here that Peugeot believed that sound knowledge of the history of costume uh, was essential for a designer to succeed. And that kind of reminds me of 
Central St. Martin's because um, I know that the head of my course, um, Judith Watt, she is very much like that in terms of journalism. She believes that as a journalist, you need to understand everything that has come before to understand everything now. And I totally agree because designers, when they reference things like the 1700s, how are you really going to know unless you understand and you've researched fashion of the 1700s? And how can you comment on that? And yeah, I just really, really like the ethos um that this course was built on and i feel like this is why a lot of designers who come from that school are innovators i feel like right now especially from people that go to like schools in paris and stuff they're very the schools are so regimented to make them design in a certain specific way that you don't see much innovation and unique designs coming from uh paris because when you think of Parisian designers, we think of Paris Fashion Week as the big thing, but the big brands in Paris Fashion Week are either houses that were made by people of the past, like Chris Dior and Chris Balenciaga, or we're talking about designers who are not really French, but they just show in Paris, like Comme des Garçons, Yoji Yamamoto. So in terms of innovation, I think Belgium has been kind of at the forefront in recent times. Um, going from like the 1980s and further on from there. And then there's also people like Raf Simmons who didn't necessarily go to the Royal Academy of Arts in Antwerp, um, but Raf Simmons learned under, was tutored by Walter van Berendonck. Raf Simmons was basically trained how to design by Linda Lopper's relatives. And Raf Simmons literally applied to the school, but Linda Lopper said, nah, you're too good, just don't come here. Just, I'll get my uncle to teach you how to design type of thing. Um, so yeah, even Raf Simmons kind of learned off the ethos of the school. And yeah, I really wanted to make this video. I know it's probably not gonna get a lot of views because it's not a very engaging topic, um, but I feel like it's good to understand uh, what schools are built on and why designers that come out from there think the way they do or design the way they do. Uh, so comment down below uh, what you like about this video. I know there's a lot of people who are from Belgium who watch this channel, uh, so shout out to those guys. Um, subscribe to my channel if you're new, turn on your post notifications so you get notified when I post another video. Uh, stay tuned for more videos. Subscribe to my Patreon guys because I'm actually going to um, start posting a lot of content there. And yeah, just stay tuned for more videos in the future.